Segment 2, Coordinate Systems. This is an image of the constellation Orion, a major constellation in the winter sky. You see Orion's belt and his sword with the Orion Nebula as the center star of the sword, and then two bright stars that represent the uh, shoulder and the feet of the great hunter. Not all of these stars have the same brightness in the image. Some of them are farther away, some of them are intrinsically more luminous. But these stars are all so far away that even with the most powerful telescopes they appear as points. The relative sizes here are only a result of the, their brightness in the image. You also notice that there are many, many, many more background stars in the image as well. Now, one way to keep track of these stars is to name them. And we can do this either by giving them proper names, and many of the brightest stars in the sky have names, mostly Arabic names actually, because the great catalogs of the Greek astronomers were preserved by being translated into Arabic and then only translated into European languages later during the late Middle Ages and the Renaissance. But for the larger number of stars, the names are given by a three-letter designation for the constellation, so Orion is Ori, and then a Greek letter with the brightest star getting the letter alpha, the next brightest star getting the letter beta, the third brightest star getting the letter gamma, etc. But this only gives us a limited number of choices, and there are many more stars than we could possibly uh, assign letters to. What we're looking at, actually, is a projection of the stars onto what we could consider to be an infinitely distant celestial sphere. Because the stars are essentially point sources, it doesn't really matter what distances they are at. The distances are, in, in fact, very difficult to measure, and we, we can do it only for stars out to a certain distance, something we'll talk about later on. What you're seeing, essentially, is a projection onto this distant sphere. So in this illustration, we see the Earth down at the lower left, and the actual positions of the stars in terms of their distance from us, and then the dashed lines show how the stars project onto the distant celestial sphere to make up some kind of a pattern on the sky. We can take that pattern and remember it by showing ourselves what it resembles on, on the sky. So here you see Taurus the bull on the right, and you see uh, Orion, our friend Orion the hunter here, in the middle with his stars laid out and the what they resemble helps us remember uh, where we are and what's going on. Astronomers want to have some more comprehensive way to keep track of which stars are where. And in order to do this we use a coordinate system that involves measuring angular distances on the sky. The stars are projected against this uh, celestial sphere, and then we measure the angle from one to another, starting with a, a base coordinate system, and this provides us a set of measures. We should all be very familiar with this type of measurement system, the coordinate system, because this is what we use on the Earth for navigation. The surface of the Earth is all the same distance from the center of the Earth to a very high degree of accuracy. So the, the R coordinate, the distance from the center of the Earth, is essentially irrelevant except for small dis differences which we give as, as altitudes. But typically when we're giving a coordinate, we only give two coordinates which are angles that tell our position on the surface of the Earth. One of these is, is latitude, which is the distance north or south of the equator in angle, starting at zero at the equator and going to 90 plus 90 at the North Pole and minus 90 at the South Pole. And the other is longitude, going from 0 to 360, which is the angular distance along the equator, um, starting with the latitude of Greenwich in England. Now we can do the same thing on the celestial sphere. We define the North Celestial Pole as a position that is a projection of the line running from the South Pole to the North Pole, the South Celestial Pole uh, being the same for going from the North Pole to the South Pole of the Earth and continuing out to infinity, and the Celestial Equator being a line on the Celestial Sphere, the sphere that's a projection of the um, Earth's equator. Again, we don't use the th third dimension because we're just going to define angular distances here and just assume that everything is plastered onto this infinite sphere. This all works because the as the Earth turns, it keeps its North Pole pointed at, at a more or less fixed position on the sky. We'll talk later about how this position slowly varies, but essentially it's a fixed position that we're dealing with. This coordinate system, then, we give in terms of declination, which is completely analogous to to latitude, that is, it starts at zero at the celestial equator and goes to plus 90 at the North Pole and minus 90 at the South Pole. 
and a quantity called right ascension, which is given instead of in, in degrees from 0 to 360, in hours from 0 to 24 hours, going through 1 hour, 2 hour, and so on, with hours, minutes, and seconds. But that's essentially dividing up the circle in the same way. The other interesting feature you see on here is something called the ecliptic, which is the path that the sun follows through the sky through the year. We also have another important coordinate system in astronomy, which is our local coordinate system. If you stand on the surface of the Earth, you can define a coordinate system by finding first the position of the zenith, the, the position that's straight overhead. This you can do by holding a weight on the end of a string, and the weight is pointing down towards the center of the Earth, and the top of the string then is pointing up towards the zenith. And we measure the altitude of an object, a star, by measuring the angle from the horizon towards the zenith. It's 0 when it's on the horizon and 90 at the zenith. And then we can measure its azimuth as the angle between north and going off to the east, going all the way around from 0 to 360 degrees. And this is our observing reference frame. How do we get between the two frames? That's the other interesting question here. Well, if we're at a position on the Earth, we can at least define a few simple uh, methods from, for getting key points. The altitude of the North Star, the star that's directly uh, at the North Celestial Pole, or very close to it, is equal to our latitude. When we're at the North Pole, our latitude is plus 90, and the North Star lies directly overhead. When we're on the equator, our latitude is zero, and the North Star lies on the horizon at altitude zero. In between, in Austin, for example, where we're at 31 degrees north, the North Star is on the north side of the sky, 31 degrees above the north horizon. The celestial equator, which is the projection of the Earth's equator out to infinity, starts on the horizon due east of us, winds up on the horizon due west of us, and reaches a maximum altitude directly on the line between north and south. That maximum altitude depends on where you are on the Earth. At the North Pole, the celestial equator is directly on the horizon. On the equa Earth's equator, the celestial equator starts due east, goes to straight overhead to a zenith angle of to, to an altitude of 90 degrees, and then goes and lands directly on the western horizon. In between, say, at the position of Austin at 31 degrees north, the maximum altitude that the equator gets to, which is 90 minus our latitude, is 90 minus 31, or 59 degrees. We'll do some exercises about this when we uh, get to it in the class.